scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It will look more regrettable because there is something obvious. Her stomach will protrude. Are we together? But if I lost after this lady, now she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her. So I will think I am free. Are, are, we, are we together now? If I slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face, you call it wickedness and you say this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression. But if I hold bitterness and jealousy, bitter anger and rage, sorry my dear, against her, it's easy for you to think I'm a spiritual man. Are we together now? Let me tell you something I have discovered. Bless you, darling. You can pick up your it is, it is easier. It is easier. Listen. In fact, in my opinion, I know that sin is sin. But in my opinion, what the Bible calls the sin of the spirit. Have you read that? There is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences. They can have regrettable consequences immediately. You are punished for it. You receive embarrassment for it and it's over. But what the Bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly. Listen, it's more dangerous. It has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress. Are we together now? And for many believers, when you begin to walk in the kingdom, because you are focusing on other things like the anointing, you know, faith, trying to understand redemption, understanding the Pauline epistles, understanding a lot of things, you know, the miraculous visions, prophecies, the gifts of the spirit, because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom, very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things. In fact, usually we interpret them to be basic. We just feel, I mean, I mean that, that's, let's, let's talk of great things like power, miracles, etc., etc. But as you rise in God, you will discover that the text of your dealing with God will no longer be physical things. Are we together? When God begins to deal with you at a mature dimension, you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything. He's not as interested um, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause, the motivation behind everything that you do. If you're following me, say amen. And so I found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word is called self-centeredness we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh it's impossible for you 
to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in God's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of Christ experientially, that entire activity is useless. Are we together? Now listen, I have discovered as I study the Bible and I've read my Bible a number of times, Every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to Jesus and his purposes. Many things happened during different dispensations, but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom. Are we together? So every story that found its way to the Bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning christ are we together now so if the Let's say the history of the church in Zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016. If the Holy Ghost were to inspire men to write, you will find out that many important things that happen in Zaria will not be recorded there. Are we together? God will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom. When you study, I mean, people who have read archaeology and history and all of that, you will know that concurrently, at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture certain historical things were happening at that same time but the bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of christ and his purposes are we together now so if god is going to write a little story about your life you will think he will write when you went to the market you will think he will write when you went to abu anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured are you getting what i'm saying now these brothers and sisters is the foundation of our work with god and this state i just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh the flesh thrives upon ownership the flesh thrives upon um personal ambition listen listen you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual so the bible says in first john chapter 2 when you read from verse 16 he says love not the world this is john the apostle now teaching us he says love not the world neither the things listen that are in the world he didn't say don't have them 15. it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world right it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category one the the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body the limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body number two he says the loss of the eyes 
Then number three, the pride of life. He says, is not of the Father, but is of the world. So, John the Beloved, having been mentored directly by Jesus Christ, and understood the, 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 the very essence of the kingdom life, is teaching us in his epistle. And he's saying, look, if you want to be spiritual people, you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed. Trying to, trying to do physical things to address jealousy, address sin, address this. All those things will only lead to legalism and religion. The core motivation behind every one of these things, believe me brothers and sisters, is self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. The need to see yourself exalted. That's why we fight. If you don't call me apostle, I fight you. Why? Because self. Self wants to be glorified. That's why we want titles. Are we together now? Seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world, there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he um when i when i when i saw it uh, for me it, it it touched me um what's that that's that's that? not not um not james help me holy spirit second timothy please give us second timothy that should be Timothy, right? 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. I think I'm right. 2 Timothy 3. Please give it to us from verse 1 to 4. It says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Verse 2. For men shall be, what? Lovers of their... Are you seeing this now? men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result many other things will follow because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters they will be proud do you understand the context of that scripture now the foundation is lovers of themselves lovers of themselves is not a point it is the reason why these other things will happen because men shall be lovers of them own, their own selves. That love for themselves will make them covetous. So when they see somebody else's thing, they say, ah, this person does not deserve it. It should be mine. It should be me. Are we together? Then it says, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, ingratitude, God, you tried, but you can do more. Unholy, uh -huh, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, look at them. Incontinent, fierce, rageful. Why are you touching my reputation? Do you not know I am Apostle Joshua Selman? Lovers of themselves. So that aggression is not a family thing this is what is leading to it why you are angry with everybody 
despisers of those that are good can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people verse 4 traitors heady high minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not God the key word is more than more than it's like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for God is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of God listen this is what happened to Lucifer I will ascend to the stars I will be like the most high that was the manifesto of Lucifer and while he said that for the first time God would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of God it was Lucifer I will be I'm not interested whether I'm sent on errand I want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the Bible says there was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you will do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure and mounts that pressure on you and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves it's why business people fight themselves it's why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations I want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that, that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it 
that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um, we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness the god of your own self now let me tell you something the devil is smart he angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of god you understand it's very subtle so you think i love god i pray when i sin i run to god that's the point you are not running to god because you love him you are running to god because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you is still you i want to go to heaven is still you it looks spiritual but it's still you are you seeing you are still self-centered that is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of god when it is about you are we together so i'm trying to walk in holiness so that um, i mean i won't do this if this lady waves me i don't even want to look at her face because by doing that god will see me it's still self-centeredness it's just a more religious form of it it's still self-centeredness are we together i'm preparing a nice message and i'm praying in tongues fasting three days dry but the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of god a, a spiritual form of self the moment it is for you for your glory for your reputation let me tell you i can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we we fight to make things work in our life you see the way you take the issue of your success too personal as if your name is on the line itself it says for i've been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me are we together watch this if this comes Sam. if this is sam's handkerchief now i love sam with all my heart if this is sam's handkerchief and it falls now i love him and i love the handkerchief but i do not think i will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief are we together if the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it is it really sam's handkerchief it's mine i'm trying to claim it that's what we do with our lives the level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it and force ourselves to walk the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal as if our world will crumble the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered that level of investment cannot just be for god we are doing it for ourselves thank you okay thank you sir. are we together When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, very sincere you see the key to walking with god is to tremble at his word and be open when you stand before god and foolishly excuse yourself it is still self-centeredness so when the word of god is coming many of us just tap ourselves and like wow i hope they are hearing are you joking this is a message for everybody it's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing 
and you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered absolutely self-centered I know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness there's so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God when the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery listen they were scholars they were dragging her to Jesus you would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law they were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus so they did not care who was the scapegoat that being used that was being used let me tell you something about self self-centeredness self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody is the hallmark of self-centeredness when my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether God or man it's none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard end ch children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex I tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness when a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel is self-centeredness it's not just pleasure it's self-centeredness are we together when somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing calling himself a rich man it is not just money it is self-centeredness because that somebody's salary in his pocket he does not care that somebody has a wife and children he does not care all he's concerned about is let me get this is it not how we all are how many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of the people oh let me talk to you and I, I say this please don't take this personal but I want to talk to you and 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 do you know do you know sincerely speaking the worst the, the worst victims of this are ladies sisters say amen that's right because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met I've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong provided they get it if you tell a lie to get the withdrawn money no problem let me just wait if I must corner somebody to buy the iPhone 6 iPhone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they will be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay they also say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going <sighs> we are like that we are laughing but that's how we are so says the word of God we are spiritual but he's helping us to rise that's what will make someone come and see someone's food the last meal and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it you were hungry but you never believe that someone else may have a desire and as far as your do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters I have worked among people leadership has opened me up to people there are people whose hearts are bad not because they are bad people themselves 
the, 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 the appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible anything that will make it happen let it happen if God will suffer to hell with him are we together yeah so when a pastor sits down and tells people all of you bring five five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and it's not even earning up to five thousand and says look you better use your faith bring your five hundred thousand it looks spiritual and people claim it's for god it's not for god when it is for god you follow god's way god has a system are we together yeah someone was talking to me um i think some weeks ago and he was just talking about churches and all of that and then he told me a few things he was just mentioning different churches and i looked at him i said i want to ask you a question i said why are you talking about these things and he said no 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 it's not like i have any problem i say you do are you kidding me you do because the god you claim to be serving who you are defending so personally is quiet so i wonder why you who is supposed to be his representative is so personal about the issue yes i know the lady wore trouser but why have you taken it so personal it's like a mission you gave yourself are you really sure you are doing that for god okay the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers what is your own business we do a lot of things that look spiritual but brothers and sisters the foundation of it is self self the need for self so we fight jealousy ladies brothers jealousy whenever you see someone with something nice something in you reacts jealousy self-centeredness it would have been me why should this lady be having this when did she i mean can you imagine this guy wanting to marry her ah come on something is wrong there is a story we must tell the brother self-centeredness how about preachers we love crowds like this we claim it's for the glory of god but underlying it is our desires that's why pastors put pressure on members they come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work when you see the way they are putting pressure this cannot be of god it's too personal why don't you let god take charge of his own kingdom Anonia is quiet this night myself for me so we go to pray Lord I trust you for a car and let me tell you something <laughs> my God you can spiritualize do you know I love the word because Jesus is the word and the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart father give me a car for your glory and then he says since it's for my glory walk with my own timing and he said no lord give me a car now for your glory and god is saying no it's for my glory let me control the timing i say lord you i force you by sowing a seed give me a car now it's for your glory and god said just remove the for your glory and say give me a car now before i know what to do with you <laughs> we think we think because we are saying for your glory it is spiritual listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure are you getting that five o'clock people wake up in every city while they are praying jesus i thank you this is a beautiful day what they are saying in the spirit is scapegoat how are you I'm, I'm awake today i hope i can use you today to please achieve my goals amen that's what they thought they did that's what they call devotion to ease the guilt and then they begin their work they do everything that they do and then they come back and say god i don't know why you are not doing this you have to do this and then you will take the glory we 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 cap our self-centeredness with that statement 
be glorified. Be glorified is not just a statement. Be glorified is a state. Where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life. The, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again. It's not the embarrassment. You have, you have, you have, you have died. You have died to your ambitions. It's about him. If koinonia does not work, it's no longer about Joshua Selman's ego to say, I will, maybe this guy is backsliding. Are you seeing? So the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages. I will think I am growing spiritually, but it's self-centeredness. That's why some of you came for koinonia this night. I know you love God. But the truth about it is that that's not the reason. Let me tell you how you know we are self-centered. Whenever we do not get our desires, our responses become ugly. Five minutes before your desire, you were trusting that the woman will not die. Lord, I know you. I take you by your word for your glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I am your servant. And then the person, the person dies. And all of a sudden, your ego is on the line. No, 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 no. Let's raise this person back to life. And you try and try and nothing happens. And your ego is on the line. I watch it happen to people. You prophesy to somebody, in the name of Jesus, you are going to get a job. And you see the pressure on you. Men of God prophesy like that and they go back and say, Oh God, please, let this word come to pass. It looks spiritual. It is your word. So you are in such a passion to bring it to pass. So that they can say, Apostle prophesied. And like he said, it came to pass. Is God helping us this night? Are you learning something? Self-centered. Brothers and sisters, are you seeing the damage it has caused to us? Sister, are you seeing that this is why if you are not careful, you may not marry the will of God? Because although in your prayer, you are saying, Lord, it's only your will. All that is talk. In reality, you have already painted the picture of the man, the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man. You have painted it. It's unbending no amount of preaching no matter how pathetic will move your mind the hardness of your heart has been glued to that image must be a millionaire then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of god same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why Jesus pleased the Father? It was not because of his miracles. It was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated for the will of God to find expression unrestrained. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1, please. Give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1 these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven father the hour is come glorify now thy son many of us will stop there and then the next thing we we'll add is amen glorify now Joshua Selman give him money give him fame give him increase but Jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you in other words lord it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point but simply because i am passionate about seeing your glory revealed use me as the vehicle for that revelation ha. there are things i know that can touch the heart of god are we together there are things i know by my experience with God that touches the heart of God more than faith believe me more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God 
Jesus, look at Jesus. Who do being equal with God. Equal with God. I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point. Father, remember that our glory. Make sure you never forget it. I'm only here for three and a half years. I'm coming back. Make no mistakes. No new election in heaven. I am here. My position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted. I'm calling on you. You better answer me. Jesus submitted himself and said, glorify me so that you will be glorified. Brothers and sisters, this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality. Do you know this is what Jesus came to give us? There's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament. Let me tell you, if you meet Jesus today, he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament. Whether you are under grace or law is nonsense. He's going to ask you one question. Who is seated at the throne of your heart? Jesus came to deliver us. The very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness. Not from a life of works. No. From a life of self-centeredness. The motivation behind our activities. Being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ. Brothers and sisters, I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or new. You are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart. I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer. The essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order. The essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom. Where Christ himself will be seated. The Lord gave me a revelation this morning. Both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin. The only difference was one executed it openly, whereas the other one kept it, which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have. Both of them were tired of the leadership of their father. One had the courage to express it. One kept it. They wanted ownership. And here's what the first one said. The first one said, give me. That self-centeredness there. Give me. I know you gave me access, but I don't want access. Because the access is in your name. I now want it in my name. Give it to me. The younger, the elder brother did not say, give it to me. But it was in his heart. Listen, I'll prove it to you. When the prodigal son returned back. And they were celebrating him. What happened to the elder brother? He became angry. And this is what he said, Father, I have served you all these years. You have not even given me a small, um, you know, a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends. You see the offense? The self-centeredness was still there. In other words, Lord, I have served you. Will you not reward me? See, this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant. That I always balance. I've been insulted many times because of this. I tell believers in terms of our personal work. We are not in a covenant with God. It's a relationship. It is only when you talk about kingdom advancement. And now bringing the operation of the principles of the kingdom. Then you bring covenant. Are we together? Because you see. Jesus gave a parable to explain that. In the morning, he saw some people idle and he called them to go and work in the farm. Is that true? He negotiated money with them. That's covenant. Terms. You work, I give you a denary. Later in the afternoon, he saw some people idle. And he said, why sitest thou idle? He said, no, my employers. He said, go. Based on relationship. They went because they loved him and they believed him. There was no arrangement that he was going to pay them. Even till the 11th hour, one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me 
the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ushering department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen i know there are times we can tie things to god but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with god it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory i will do anything to behold you as my king One more time. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to be hold you as my king. I want to be with you. John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But, I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. He said, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. In other words, whoever among you fits that definition, cast the first stone. All of them left and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone. He said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and sin no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. Are we together? The essence of Christianity, brothers and sisters, is not legalism and religion. The essence of Christianity is not even evangelism. The essence of Christianity is not heaven. The essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money. The essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing. The essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only secondary listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days. You fast with yourself at the center of your heart. You have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program. I assure you, you are not going to touch the anointing. A heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come. Okay, Lord. This is the lady I want to marry. Oh, I like her. But thy will. Everybody say thy will. 
be done say thy will this is the language of a Christ centered life Lord I want to go to London it's always been my desire however I realize that my life is not my own the Bible says I've been bought with a price you don't act as if Jesus didn't finish paying for you he paid for you completely in fact whether you are born again or not you are still his property the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein right so whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son you still belong to him listen to what Jesus said my meat this is what moves my life my nourishment my satisfaction is to do the will of who him that sent me and to finish it I am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will so if in the course of doing the will of God I operate certain principles and I enjoy blessings while I'm wearing the nice suit while I'm driving the nice car my gaze is set on seeing him glorified so prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because I met it on my way to pleasing God whether or not I met it I am determined to still finish pleasing him so Paul says what then shall separate us from the love of God look at this the apostle who brought himself back to life they killed Paul immediately they went he came back to life and shook himself my God a man who wrote two third of the gospel this is what he said for for me to live is Christ I don't know for you but for me to live is Christ then even if I die listen Paul was not saying if I die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me if you die as a result of armed robbery it's not gain it's a loss because one you are going to hell number two the kingdom is not advanced through that but that Paul was trying to say look my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering and regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise it is secondary so compared to the fulfillment of God's program your marriage is secondary that marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week and then later the number 27 is now God your will be done exclamation mark after you have written everything and vented out your lust he sees he looks from heaven the Holy Spirit sees our motivations while we pray he's watching us while we do the things that we try to do he's watching us while we gossip about people you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve it's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own that you are not willing to hand over to the cross let me tell you if you want to love God he will love me for what I'm teaching you this night it's the key to make spiritual men a life that is completely out and you see some of us we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered are we together we come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered they look at you and say promise how old are you and they say uh, maybe I'm, 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 I'm 32 or I'm 30 or I'm 35 and they say ah, you should have a car by now ah, ah, what are you saying you should have a car and have a five children and this and then that challenges you and you go back and say Lord they are insulting you God said they are not insulting me if they are insulting me I will react I'm not offended I said God me I'm offended I'm serving you <laughs> you see we create all kinds of theological messages let me tell you if he's the one taking the glory why are you taking the shame listen whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame please help me why do you claim God is taking the glory but you always take the shame are we together take it half on me now see how we pack the shame and we claim that we are giving God the glory we are not there's a song in my spirit and the shout of the earth will be your praise God forever and the light unto all 
will be your wonderful name. All the glory, Lord, is yours. God forever, all the glory is yours. Listen, Lord Jesus, if I remain barren like this, I give you praise. I will never stop serving you, but it is your reputation. So let the pressure go to him. Are we together? The moment people look at you and say, are you a woman or a man? Direct the shame to him. But you sit down and absorb the shame and say, God, give me a man child or I die. And God says, this thing you are doing is not for my glory. It's spiritual. You are sincere. I'll show you why many people never get rich. They think the key is doing business. They think the key is after all of these things, God looks at your heart and says, no, sir. You are better off without it than you are with it. Because when it comes to your heart, it will possess you and tear you. So you see that it's not all about imparting anointing. Apostle, I'm not seeing crowds in my ministry. I know if you speak a word, the doors will open. And here I'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity. But you dared your fellowship members that you are coming to collect power like a charm and say, Watch me. When I come back, you will see what will happen to this church. Your self centeredness drove you for hours on the road, sweating and praying, feeling spiritual, and you could not wait to see me. The moment you received that anointing, whether or not you thought you received it, you were in a hurry. And he said, from today, don't play with me anyhow. Apostle laid hands on me. See the picture. Aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results? They never change suddenly. They only manifested it. I told you, the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother. We keep, I used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother. But I found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing. One was quiet with his own while the other one executed it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus as Gethsemane. Listen. Listen, listen. There are two things here that we must understand. We are going to read it. But the first thing you need to understand is Jesus had his own will. It is okay to have your will. It is okay to have your desires. Only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny. And if need be, give way for the will of God to prevail. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. your desires are only worthy of execution when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of God if at any point your desires no matter how intelligently constructed if there is a difference from your desires and God's desires one must bow and for many of us largely it's been God's desires bowing so salary leads you to the job are we together? You look at the lady and say, Kai, I like the way this lady speaks. Don't you think she'll be a nice wife? You see, let me tell you something, brothers. Let me give you a frank advice. If you keep being carnally minded, I give you two guarantees. Guarantee number one, you will miss out on the will of God. Two, you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage. You have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on God. I saw that lady figure eight. Be careful. Be very, very careful. I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us, but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God. There is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God. Father, if thou be willing. Remove this cup from me. Here's the language of spiritual.
find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will. I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why I should leave Zaria now. And we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because... I have seen something I, say, ah, I don't understand clarify when you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you there are dimensions he will never enter and the spirit drove Jesus he didn't say Jesus are you in harmony with me let's go to the wilderness you are going to get power there if you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life your life will be too slow for impact you have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say lord your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil i don't have to wait until i understand you are too good to destroy me mm. you are too good to destroy me so whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say god you save kai if i were an unbeliever by now i would have done something God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says when we walk through the fire, you won't rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God five years after marriage no child and people come and you know people are so naughty they can say something and say ah, madam you are serving god what is all this one at least go go for koinonia now eh apostle is anointed he can is he pride what is stopping you and then after listening to those things you can go back and cry and say oh god give me a child or i die no you say father a child or no child let me tell you one truth me and you we are stuck to air forever. A child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line. How many people have seen carry over and left God? They say, what, what is the use? The day I served God, I failed. When I didn't serve God, I succeeded. And you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense. Nonsense! Is that all your life is about? Why do you compare your relationship with God with academics? Is it ever a match? Why do you compare your relationship with God with marriage? Why do you compare your relationship with God with a job? Is, is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce God to be equal with these things? God will never, I cannot reduce God to the issues of my life the petty issues of my life and say god you are uh, uh, me ask him ask him you are spiritual people will i ever open my mouth and tell god he's not faithful why that what happened just because there was no tea to eat you to tea to drink and bread to eat you carry the bible and run around heaven oh god are you giving me tea or I should tear my Bible? Is this your word? And God says, now nah, well, what is all this one? Just because of tea you are shouting? Self-centeredness. 
this is why the anointing does not work in the life of people this is why God does not lift certain people inside outside online you are hearing me and the Lord is speaking to you can your will bend to the will of God look at me if your will cannot bend to the will of God you are carnal it's not an insult it's a description you are carnal and self-centered let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of God when sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life if God says Joshua Selman remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone I don't say oh God see let's be real me I'm trying let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal the ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered and I'm not talking of small things your turn singlet God says give say, ah, after all I was going to even burn it so let me give this guy that's not giving God will never ask you to give what they gave you. He will ask you to give what you worked for. He's very smart. If he says, if he, he, look, let me tell you something. This our God is powerful. He will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift. Then he will ask you to release it. God will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to. Because it doesn't make sense. The essence is not the giving. The essence is your heart giving him space to find expression. When Satan comes to you, he studies the things that have not been surrendered to God. That becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. If the Lord asks me now and says, Son, let this be your last sermon as Joshua Selman in the name of jesus christ the resurrected lord i'm standing before him i will not like him when i drop this mic no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach i'll cry because i have a lot of passion for this but i love him more than that if you like carry placard bring back apostle move around with it and say no you must come back the demon that manipulated your mind you must come back i said i understand you are human if i were you i would do the same thing but i'm not going back again let me tell you brothers and sisters listen i have laid down things in my life you will not believe it's a price some of us finances whenever money is leaving you even if you are keeping it i don't mean you are giving it just that like you are keeping it's not in your pocket you feel the pain just that is somewhere aside from your pocket that is the apex of carnality materialism and self-centeredness joined together god does not want your money what does he do with it god does not want your clothes he wants your heart because when he finds your heart he finds everything sisters let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want your life is full of so much carnality it's not an insult you love God but the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart you have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of God interrupt anything Lord don't come and interrupt my program I have my life all planned out same thing with the brothers that's why people are confused in Nigeria they don't know what to do with their lives they claim they are hearing God they claim they are walking with God but their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful are we together the quest to buy a car the quest to get married the quest to have children you have all girls and somebody is asking you ah kilo day we need girls and boys so and you now turn and land the warning on your wife say madam you had that thing please i'm tired of this embarrassment oh yeah let's pray lord give us a child for your glory no give us a child for my ego my masculinity is being insulted and i want to use you to cure it and god says no way i'm not that cheap brothers and sisters this night i want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will but your will be done you find peace in your life i like
like Job. Job lost everything in his life. As if that were not enough. You can lose any other thing if you have your health, you are okay. He lost his health. Dogs would come and lick the source of Job. Do you know what that means? Imagine seeing Ali Kodangote on the streets of Zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark, dirty wrapper. And people look and say, Job, you? Where were the friends you helped? And Job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said, Job, curse God and die. And Job said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Though he slay me, Though he slay me, I know I've been embarrassed. My ego has been stung till there's no ego. Yet will I trust him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. The three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, let it be known unto you that our God will deliver us. We know that there is a provision in him to deliver us. However, even if, uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one. You call even if doubt. Hey, nothing. My husband must come December. Lord, I tell you, I've sown seed. I am even taking communion. Please don't give God a headache with all these stories. Save yourself all that immaturity. Say, Lord, I give you praise. I'm showing you the secret to peace. There are men and women who have found peace. You see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in God that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda. To find expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about Joshua Selman it's about his kingdom I bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the New Testament what they preach the new, in the New Testament is they say, okay, now there's no more works. Jesus has done everything. Enjoy. That's complete nonsense. It's an incomplete truth. The key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered. The motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory. There's nothing that gives my life joy as that name, be that word be glorified. Lord be glorified. It's my statement every time. When I pray, all I tell him is be glorified. Be glorified. Preparing for miracle service, Lord, I thank you. I love you with all my heart. Your people are coming. They are trusting that you will use me. And Lord, I thank you. Be glorified. Every time I stand on this stage and I look at you, believe me. I have no business trying to impress anybody. His glory. His glory. That's why I do the things that I do. We just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year. Sometimes while we're traveling, when we're on transit, I just sit down. The last meeting was last week and we had to leave, I think 4.30 in the morning to catch up with our flight to Lagos. And while we're going in the night, I was saying, what is all this? Why am I risking my life like this? I didn't sleep. I wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time and I had to what am I looking for ministry am I so dull that I cannot write a book can't I do a webinar are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent the internet has helped to make omnipresence possible I can be everywhere so what what the heck is all this traveling around and all of a sudden you just remember for his glory for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are, I got to be where you are, I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night. Some of you, the load you are carrying 
it's a demon that put it on your head that load is not from god the bible says my yoke is easy and my burden is light your life is surrounded by too many self-inflicted worries worries that make no sense at the foundation of those worries is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but i bring you a message here's what jesus said come on to me it didn't say discuss with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you sister the worry in your life is killing you there are some of us who are older than our age they look at you and they say how old are you let me guess uh, 37 you say me i'm just 25 what what made that worry added an age that was not given by god you see people worry all the time they get up in the morning they are worried ah the bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit this is scripture do you know honestly speaking sometimes when 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 i drive around the road or when i stand i start laughing in the car i'm just laughing because i'm saying my god what made people like this how did people suddenly become like this you see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my god who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as i'm speaking an arm robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this, we will steal this one, then we'll run out. He may die this night. That's his mindset. When Jesus says, I will give you rest, believe it. There is a pastor right now who is not sleeping. He's under pressure. The messages I'm preaching, are they new or are they still? Does it look like I'm growing? Pressure. How can we multiply the members? I already prophesied that we're going to have three times. And now it's almost December we need like 1,000 more people how can we do that your ego on the line forcing you to wake your leaders in the night in the name of leaders meeting but it's simply your ego on the line please rest prophesy to someone close to you say rest say it rest I bring you a system in the kingdom where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems look at this come sir if this guy is an arm robber watch this this is an example if he's an arm robber and you catch him stealing now i'm the policeman and i'm about, about to shoot him are we together the moment i shoot this guy and he falls to the ground is that an arm robber again that's not an arm robber are you seeing that's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years and understanding made that body jump a fence by force something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor it was never the body the body did not jump on the fence by itself a self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too we are like the young guys the ones that have you see you see there's this craze among young people the ones who have made it let me see the designer you are wearing the watch how much hundred and how many thousand there is are you wearing versace or this and the other person said kai you see i'm tired of all this tailor tailor thing this guy that is sewing something suit is bending around i need to start dressing well and we put ourselves under pressure that's what some of you are doing now you promise yourself to wear a particular we before christmas it's unnecessary that money can pay your rent your small house that you are you are paying unnecessary things listen please i want you to write this down the only thing that is worth your blood the only thing that is worth your blood listen to me is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood 
is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married your marriage two things they are the only things that the Bible places so much priority onto even unto death thank you are we together I think it was last week or the week before last I sang a song I will sing it again When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers lend this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish this is what i'll do with my life this is the part of the song that I really like. We'll raise your banner high. We we'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Prophesy one minute to yourself and say, I reject worry. Say it. I reject it. No. You came with culture, but I reject you. I reject self centeredness. I hand over the management of my life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Whatever God cannot do cannot be done. No, whatever God cannot do, let no man fool you that can be done. <speaking in Spanish> Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak English, you can choose nonsense for yourself. The depression you are having, going online, wanting to like every lady, capturing people's pictures on your phone, is nonsense. That self-centeredness on rampage, hand over that rubbish to God and rest. If God does not give you a husband, cut walk, jump, pray in tongues, cook, you will never marry until he gives it. A man can have nothing except it is given unto you. If God does not open access to wealth, do business, buy, sell, sell cement, sell sand, do anything, I assure you, you will never have this thing. In the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust he said my son give me your heart God does not anoint you try to start a ministry you will be shocked that you are preaching well yet nobody will come because it has not been given everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven 
you will never have it. Time. The warrior of men is killing them. Listen, listen. Because of the healing ministry, I study a lot about health. Do you know I have found out? I'm not a doctor. We have doctors here. But most of the disease, what we call it disease, people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them. I tell you, I have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences, all sicknesses, all sicknesses are psychologically related. Depression. When will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure? You have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life. But somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village, you start building and die there. Have you ever gone to UK? No, 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 no. And you are putting yourself under pressure. Selling your car, selling your wife, selling your children to get the TP to go to UK and live like a fool at the borders. Go and see Nigerians abroad. See them under bridges. When a student is here in Nigeria, and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you I live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry I say me burden of the ministry you are joking I can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you I'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell I am a very very happy person whatever I don't have I keep it when koinonia started here miracle service I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here your ego will not allow you to leave you say no way god collect it i will buy and you buy it and it never gives you joy when you insist on taking what god did not give you he will take back something he gave you write it down when you insist on taking what God did not give you believe me he will take back something he gave you we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you Lord I will raise your banner high I shine your light so bright I sing in honor of you. You know, you know, my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel. Do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport, we just get to the airport and because we arrived late, we've missed our flight. They have, they have learned this, that I don't worry. If someone calls me now and says, Apostle, your house is on fire, your car is on fire, everything is on fire your bank is on fire i will tell them let me finish coin on you when i finish i look at it i say okay so what bond there's nothing we can recover glory be to god i give you praise do you know what i'm going to do i'll go back and i'll sleep to wake up and say ah my life <laughs> no i've grown up you know what we say alex okay in house it'll never happen never happen I'm giving you the secret of rest some of you are surprised is it really true because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind you are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry you never believe that there can be such a reality 
it is your ego self-centeredness self-centeredness please please hear me hand over your life to god I, i'm not i don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this i handing your life to god is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires i know the bible says he will give us the desires of our heart but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing god using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours i've told him this many times koinonia belongs to him you can call me anything you want to call me it's never my ministry i don't have the power to run a ministry it belongs to him that's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom i imagine how depressed i would have been if i were doing ministry by myself and my strength i live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more i decrease my worry decreases whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house i i mean let him let him handle everything he's not in me as a tenant he's in me as a landlord i give you the secret of peace quit the life of self-centeredness finances all of this I, i'm trying to do this keep your ego on the line if you ever seek prosperity let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom if your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom one gentleman came and met me and he said that um that he wanted to be to, me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that, that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right I see the shoe you are wearing i see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you are not going to give you are only a liar and the money will kill you if you even get it sir, it's not even, you will not get it at best you will just be comfortable god is not a fool you can choose your way and die with it but his way you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised Ha, when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give god the praise god is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce uh -uh. my child are you cursed what is wrong i am your mother oh yeah i bless you go and bring a husband mommy the lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away 
and dance it and let Satan see you rejoicing. Ah, you are you are a graduate, you are you are masters, you even have PhD, no job. What is wrong with you? This other guy is a smoker and he's working in NMPC. You claim to love God, huh? and even I mean you cannot even get a job anywhere. Jesus be praised, be glorified. Not in the name of Jesus. I will go about what kind of I'm tired of unbelievers mocking me. Let them mock. If you take the shame, what are you doing with the glory? He cannot take the glory and give you the shame. Whoever takes the shame should also take the glory. Rise up on your feet. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. I have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to sing it from the depth of your heart hey, hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself Point number one, Lord, take away this load from my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take it away. This unnecessary pressure to prove a point, this unnecessary pressure is making me greedy, is making me covetous. Take it away from my life. Koinonia, pray. Lord, take this load. It's depressing me. I can't sleep because of it. I cry alone in the night because of it. I hand over everything to you. Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two listen you are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self-centeredness has produced listen some of you have bitter jealousy you love god but if you ever see something that is not in you 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 get resentful covetousness high-mindedness you crave for recognition you will claim you don't but it's written all over your life your appetite for recognition is to a fault you may not directly go to look for it but when they bring it the way you jump at it shows you desire it are we together what of lost lost your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory I am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself 
in outshining others what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of God everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify God prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen Nimrod Kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the Antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition I like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant don't claim there's nothing to pray for selfishness lord deliver me pray open your mouth and pray jesus deliver me from lust deliver me from pride have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it I don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it I'm so obsessed by my desires I don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh God are you praying I have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what I want are you praying hallelujah listen you are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what I'm saying? You must sustain the discipline. It cannot be give me, give me. Your hand is always open to collect. There are times, do you know? Do you know there are certain homes that sometimes, I, I'm not saying this is the general reason, but there are times I deliberately will not want to go. Do you know why? Especially some of our parents and loved ones. I will not go because I know how much they honor me. And sometimes they can be constrained financially. Are we together? And I know that attempting to go there, they will go out of their way. Maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place. And I say, no, no, no. Or sometimes I take them unawares. And I insist that they don't give anything. Maybe a cup of water just to bless the house. But some of you, I know that if you are functioning in this grace, people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people. How many millionaires in many churches cannot testify? Because the day they just testify, I paid a tithe of one million. The pastor says, See me after service, the other office, not the regular one. And that man never rests. Text message all the time. We need chairs in this church. Is God speaking to you? Let me know if he's talking. All kinds of pressures. 
the discipline to have empathy for people don't want something so bad you enter a room you want to cook your food you pour water on people's bed that's it the room you are self-centered you are more concerned about your stomach you don't care what happens to any other person there are husbands like that they never pray they never do anything the day they are going to pursue them from the office, they organize night vigil. Everybody is seated at home peacefully. The next thing, you see one man of God who just enter like a thief and start singing around. And he'll call everybody. And nobody will sleep that night. Because the man has a problem. But when somebody is about to die, and they say, ah, my husband, let's pray. They say, no, 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 no. That's their business. Our society is full of self-centeredness. That's why many husbands never enjoy their homes. They claim they have experience in marriage but their self-centeredness destroys them many wives same thing many children same thing self-centeredness fools the society i like you to pray and say lord give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others to make sure that i not only receive results but that i don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires lift your voice and pray empathy of the feeling of others the bible says for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity hallelujah listen there are some of you after this meeting you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them i'm so sorry i never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad there are people you are supposed to send them text messages are we together yeah so bad they make their bed you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down. It's not worth it. When the election, Nigeria's election, and the president now won, Jonathan did something, I'm not a politician, but he did something that touched my heart. There were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that I seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many African nations right now. Leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat. His life has become a template. That's what happens when you create a sense of empathy. Don't say, I want the shoe so bad, if I must steal, I will steal. I want the phone so bad, if I must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate, to just ask, please, grow up. Don't put people in trouble because of your desires. It's too selfish. One more time, you are going to pray and say, Lord, help me. I'm tired of self-centeredness. Now my eyes have been opened and I'm seeing how much because of my life, so many people's destinies are almost being destroyed. My gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people. From today, I receive grace to shut my mouth. My blackmail has destroyed too many people. 
I have joined the hands of the heads of good friends. I have caused trouble for too many people. It's not worth it. I'm a child of God. stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we are done the next prayer point you are going to pray and say Lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let I will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but Lord I declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray believe me when I tell you nothing aside from the purposes of God is a do or die affair you will kill yourself for nothing Hallelujah. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. We're reading down to 13. Keep standing if you can. We're rounding up already. Let me teach you something you may have never seen. After this manner, Jesus is teaching us how to communicate with heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of God. And this is what he says. After this manner, therefore, in this pattern, pray. Pray with this order of priority. Number one, our Father which art in heaven. Priority number two, I reverence you. In the eyes of Jesus, your reverence for God is more important than the forgiveness of your sins. Look at it. After this man, I pray. Hmm. Jesus is teaching here. Hallowed be your name. That is the foundation for everything that I do. I want to reverence you. That is the reason why I will not go and smoke. It's not just because I'm running away from hell. No. I desire that you be lifted. Hallowed be your name. Next verse, your purposes. Are you seeing now? This is your prayer. The moment you reference the Father, the next priority is anything that will move his purposes. Look at this. I hallow your name and I desire your kingdom to come, your influence. And that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth. So he focuses on the will of God. Is that how you pray? No. Your needs. That's what you drum heaven with. You sing one or two praise and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven. But he's teaching us how to pray. Your kingdom come. This is what I want. Next verse so that your kingdom can come effectively give us our daily bread the reason why i need daily bread is not because i'm hungry the reason why i need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming i need to eat i need supplies in my life i need the millions and the billions so that i can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come on that wise give us this day our bread next verse because i want your kingdom to come and i know that you are a holy god that my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you 
forgive me our debts as i forgive others so the reason why i am asking forgiveness is not just because i want to run to heaven the reason why i am asking for forgiveness is because i dis i love him so much i do not i want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that i will be called apostle joshua selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed i will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and say ah that's not a correct statement i'm god all by myself there is nothing I ever ask God that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it. If the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it, it is useless. You can literally, like lighting a candle, fetch from the abundance of the investment of the spirit upon your spirit and release it upon a people. That means, just like if we, if we announce that this guy has Lassa fever, many of you are going to get up and say, ah, Lassa fever. He... The Lassa fever may not ask you whether you have the ability to believe it. Just by making contact, whether it is through air, it is through water. Are we together? But what of the anointing of the Spirit? Is it so bound that it cannot reach you? Is it so bound that it cannot touch you? What of the life of God? What of the wisdom of God? I want you to expect, if you have this revelation, then the man of God does not need to come close to you. That you are sitting there are virtues of wisdom there are virtues of power there are virtues of grace there are impartations all kinds of things happening if you sit under the atmosphere conscious of it you will receive it but if you sit down wondering and say wow great things are happening it doesn't happen that way there is no man of god that is ordinary there is no true man of god that god has anointed you may just look at this as ordinary hands biology tells you these are just ordinary hands but it's more than this there is a mystery surrounding it you hear the words that i speak the same way you cannot see the sound but you cannot deny its effect you are hearing it are we together i'm not just speaking from my vocal cords i'm speaking from my spirit man so together with that sound it, there is an anointing that is living and entering into you when it's time to pray some of you will stand up and find out all of a sudden have been healed my goodness where is this growth it has disappeared if a man's leg starts swelling we never ask where the body found the added flesh to make it swell but when it shrinks we say where did the flesh go to are we together if someone like me now has my leg two times the size nobody will say but where did the body get the extra flesh to add to it but if it disappears and comes back people say ah, ah, where did it go to condition your mind to believe god condition your mind to believe god is able are we together now bless you and you see let me encourage pastors especially when you come here don't just watch and be happy i'd like you to not just look but see because in seeing there are things you receive don't sit down carelessly and just say wow Kai, this guy is anointed no that's not the goal the goal is that it is and it's not just to inspire you it's not inspiration there is an impartation a transference of spiritual quality 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You've got to be tired. You've got to insist that God will step in. There are impossible situations in this place and I admit that some of them are humanly impossible. There is no way. But don't, don't play with God. Once you bring God into the equation, step back. You'll be foolish to bring God and still be wondering, will he do it? The Bible says they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God, can God make a table in the wilderness? Oh yes, he can. Hallelujah. Are you ready for what God will do in your life tonight? Are you ready to insist that the word of God must find expression? Please, let me tell you, if you don't believe in what we are saying, don't waste your time, just go home. So that you don't sit down in this cold and waste your time. And after koinonia, they ask you, what did you receive? You just smile and say, Kai, Ayafi Babu. No, no. Because you see, there are people, some of you coming here alone has attracted a lot of mockery. They say, why come and sit down there, a man of God? Can't you pray in your room and God will hear you? Is it not the same God we are worshipping? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing can be farther from the truth. That it looks spiritual, but it's an error. Are we together? The next time anybody tells you that, tell them human beings have prophetic implications human beings have prophetic implications lift your voice and pray in one minute say Lord Jesus lift my faith tonight I have faith in you I've tried medications I've tried human connections I've tried everything I know to do but I come before you the God of all flesh the one who can change my situation. Lift your voice and make sure you are praying. Give me a visitation tonight, oh God. I refuse to be a spectator. You can change my story. Make sure you are praying. Lord, every spirit, go to the root of my problem, so God, that every force of darkness that is responsible for the situations in my life it must be addressed tonight it must be addressed tonight that spirit that has tied my family down tied my destiny down tied my womb down those outside make sure you're praying no matter how far you are, the Lord is seeing your faith. You are enduring the cold because you want your destiny to change. You will not be disappointed tonight. Pray to the God that answers all flesh. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Though you are higher than any other. Awesome in power, our God, our God. Sing it to Him. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, You are higher than any other. Our God is greater, awesome in power.
Alléluia. Alléluia. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing I'm seeing a vision. I'm seeing a vision and in this vision I'm seeing chains. This is what I'm seeing. Before I even start the mass prayer, I'm seeing chains and those people are affected. The power of God is going to begin to come upon them inside and outside. I'm seeing chains. This is the spirit of delay. I'm seeing delay written in the atmosphere. Delay. Delay. I'm going to begin to pray. Listen, there are people whose lives and destinies have been held bound by the spirit of delay. By the spirit of delay. No matter where you are, inside or outside, it's like a force, an energy of the spirit. I want to help those people outside here. Lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted inside and outside. Just lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands towards you. And as I stretch my hands towards you and begin to speak, it's like fire. The power of God will begin to come upon such people. Those who are outside, you can stretch your hands just over your, your various projectors. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that spirit, I speak to you in the realm of the spirit. You have held the destinies of men and women. You have held the destinies of families. But the Bible says upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the sons of Jacob will possess their possession. Therefore, I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak every spirit of delay right now, right now, right now. I stretch my hands by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I stretch it right now. Bring them out. Say, yeah, of multiplied grace. I stretch my hands. The angels of the, of the Lord are moving. Row to row, row to row, row to row, it will get to your turn. Inside and outside, row to row. If that's not your situation, it will not affect you. But you will never stand the power of God. If this is one of the reasons God brought you here. Right now, I stretch my hands. Outside, lift your hands. The angels of the Lord are moving. Lord, every row, every row, I keep my hands stretched. That devil of delay, you must leave. You must leave. You must leave. The second overflow, God is touching people there. The second overflow, like fire, is coming upon people. The second overflow, that spirit of delay your time is up tonight your time is up tonight there's a lady wearing white hair tie the anointing of the spirit is causing that delay that delay right now that delay right now right now right now right now it's a spell it's like a charm i'm seeing it on the heads of people i command that spell that charm of delay you must leave you must leave you must leave Shakabakata, shakatakata, shakatatate. I tell you, no spirit will stand the power of God tonight. No, you must let them go. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus I come against you I come against you I come against you delay is a dangerous thing it traps your life so that when you ought to move and make significant progress it will hold you bound there are many lives and destinies that are tied down families please lift your hands the Lord is telling me that he wants to visit the root of witchcraft in families pay attention to what I'm saying because the power of God will move in a mighty way there are families here hear me you love God but you do not know what is at the root of the tragedies of the families there are spirits there are covenants there are fraternities with darkness that have kept families bound it may not even be your fault you are inheriting the wickedness of men but tonight lift your hands I want to pray for you 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 as I speak over your life again the Lord is going to be ministering to families it may not have anything to do with you as a person some of you you will step into visions immediately and begin to see a lot of destruction and havoc going on father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now inside the first overflow the second overflow across the road every family that is under the influence of any satanic manipulation Lord you will not only identify them they must be free at the count of three I want you to shout I am free are you ready now one two three shake it take it shake it take it take it all tasks all tasks all tasks all tasks I call you by your name and I curse you by the God of heaven I call you by your name altars in Benway state altars in Kogi state altars in Kaduna state altars in the west altars in the east my goodness every local government every state I set fire on those altars fire 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 on those altars fire on those altars every covenant with the waters every covenant with the air every covenant with the earth every covenant of darkness tying families I declare that this is your time of jubilee I send the word of judgment I send the word of judgment hallelujah I wish the Lord can open your eyes to see the mighty things that are happening mighty things that are happening hallelujah listen something very strange will start happening here now listen listen to me 
because I just saw a vision like a bunch of keys. It just dropped on the ground. Listen, this, this is a sign of access in the spirit. The Lord showed me a vision and I saw in the spirit a bunch of keys. Now, it's not for everybody, but I'm about to pray. Once it comes on you, except God did not call me, you will see doors open. It's called breakthrough. Lift your head. I stand under this apostolic anointing. And in the name of Jesus, every destiny that needs this breakthrough, at the count of three, receive it, receive it. Take it now. 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 I distribute those keys in the spirit. I distribute those keys inside and outside. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Breakthroughs. 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 The opening up of destinies the opening up of destinies the opening up of destinies listen those of you outside i want you to hear me because the holy spirit is going to do something now the lord asked me to come out hallelujah hallelujah now i want count three my goodness there is such anointing in this place and i see the angels the lord the moment you count three i'm going to start moving across this crowd and the power of god will start falling on people whatever has locked your destiny it must open it right now are you ready now those outside please believe we are not playing games father in the name of jesus may the angels move in this crowd in the name of jesus at the count of three shout at one two three receive it right now right now right now right now right now i stretch my hands as i move across let an anointing come as i pass your role as I pass your row, you will stand it. As I pass your row, an anointing, an anointing. Take it, 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 take it now. I stretch my hand. Take it, take it. This side, receive it. Take it now. 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 I stretch my hands. Take it now. Take it now. Everyone in this row, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Take it now. All those here, there is an angel of the Lord standing on your row. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Just allow me to pass your row. As I'm coming, there are angels walking with me. As I'm coming, the power of God will touch you right now. I stretch my hands here. Everyone here, right now, take it now. Take it right now. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to you. Call this man, come. This big man, come. What's your name? Come now, let's hurry up. What's your name? The Lord is saying, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, from where? From Edo State, sir. From Edo State. I mean, are you in Zaria? In Zaria. You are in Zaria. I want you to rejoice because you have entered a new level this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you celebrate them, you connect to their prophecy. Listen, because I'm seeing you in a cage. This is what I see. I've not started prophesying yet, but I'm seeing you in a cage. And I'm seeing you telling the Lord, I know that if I come here, my situation will change. In the name that is above all names, I lay my hands upon you and I end that captivity right now. Take it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is grace? There's someone grace around here. 
who is grace i'm hearing that the lord is showing me someone grace who is grace please come quickly let's save time come where is your mother Zango. Is she sick? My sister is sick. Don't worry. Is your mother sick? She doesn't even know she's sick. But she's sick. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going to your house and healing two people. Your mother and your sister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your mother and your sister. What do you do? You're a student. What do you do? Huh? Applicant. Job applicant. Do you believe that if I pray for you, the Lord will give you a job? Will you come and testify before God's people? I lay my hands upon you and I release that job for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From this road down like this, there are a number of ladies with abdominal pain. Because I'm seeing like the angel of the Lord is moving something. I stretch my hands right now. Whoever they are, the power of God is coming upon them right now. Right now, right now right now in the name of jesus christ that pain that abdominal pain must go it must go right now in the mighty name of jesus christ let me try to walk to the first overflow in the name of jesus christ look at me you will start experiencing the power of god in your life in a very strange way are you hearing what i'm saying i lay my hands upon you right now step into a new season i want to pray for this overflow there are so many people please believe god don't think i've come outside because i want to identify with you so you don't think you are at a disadvantage no distance is no barrier some of you are enduring cold is touching my heart talk more of the heart of god are you hearing what i'm saying and some of you need to watch because what you are seeing me do is what you will be doing in some years to come so just watch it you are just receiving miracles there is an impartation joseph who is joseph here yeah. If I'm hearing a name, Joseph, you are wearing like a collar, like for cold. Who is that? You are Joseph. The Lord is going to do mighty things through you. Stand up, there's cold, so you don't enjoy yourself. Are you hearing me? I want to stay through with God and watch God do great things in your life. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing two old women. They are sitting on the same seat. Where are they? Here, this row. Two mama like this. Where are they? Is there some? Who is that? The Lord is asking me to talk to them. Just leave them. Mama, do I know you? Have we seen before? I'm looking at you. Can, can they? If they cannot hear, we can speak any language. Can I talk to you, Mama? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. Don't be afraid. I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. And the Lord is saying, if we don't pray for you, that's how you'll be getting up and a bike will collide with a car. It's like a station wagon and it will kill you for nothing. But the Lord is saying I should pray for you. The second thing is there's no finances at all. Everything flat. Is that true? Is that true in your life? Is what the, why you came? Where is your daughter? Do you have a daughter? Huh? I'm seeing a lady close to you. Like a, a, I don't know if she's a, a daughter or a logical or not. Because I'm seeing the Lord is saying that he wants to bless her with marriage. You are the one okay you are the one standing close to her are you ready to marry because god is going to surprise you do you believe that huh say i, re I receive i receive you are not you are you are trying to be a lady but my dear prophecy you see a madman like this i'm only responding to god just out and see what the anointing does shout i receive as loud as i receive jesus christ i break that curse over your head mama you will not die all of you here stretch your hands to her and say mama will not die take us your mother pray for her mama will not die in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm looking at this other mama i don't know what's wrong with this woman but there are three things i see the devil want to do number one eyes ah huh? but two I'm seeing her inside a coffin. They have already closed it and there's blood on top of the coffin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody used her eyes to make money with it. This is what the Lord is showing me. I'm not a prophet of doom. 
me to don't like what I'm saying, but I cannot but say what God is asking me to say. Are you here? I'm seeing a lady here. I'm, I'm still going to come in, please. We're trying to work with the time. Um, but I'm seeing a lady here. How you know is the power of God is about to come upon you right now. One of the ladies here. This is witchcraft that has destroyed the life of your family. And the Lord wants me to minister to you in this other overflow. Father, wherever she is right now, locate her. The power of God is going to come on one lady right now. It will be like fire. You can't stand it. It will come upon you. Please, when that happens, let me know that lady right now. Not just those inside. I know God is inside, but this role, this role, Father, wherever that lady is, I'm declaring right now by the anointing of the Spirit of God that she will be located so that her can be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, your name means joy. It's a tribal name, but it has joy. It's like it. Who is that person, please? Your name means joy. That's if you translate your name, it has something to do with joy, joy or joyful or something like that. Do we have someone like that? Please make sure you are telling the truth so that it doesn't look like we're acting. If, if you are that couple with the protocol, who is that? What's that? Uh? Come. What's your name? What child means what? Child of joy. I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? She's in Kaduna. Is this working? Okay. Tell your mother her time will lay hands on you. And I want that if you go back and see your mom, just ask her to allow you to break through. My hands upon you right now. I don't mean their English names are Joy. What's, what's your name? From where? Your name is Yah. All of you, your names are Joy. Okay, I'm going to name you. Let me talk to you. Come, my dear. Where is your family? Kaduna, I'm going to pray for you. Because that has tied your family down. I look at me, look at me. Does it make sense to you? The Lord is dead because I'm seeing your family tied down in witchcraft. And God is saying that He's lifting them up by His grace. Father, let it end right now. Out of this family. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands upon you. Help her, please. Help her so that she Who is that? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. For you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please hold on. There is a lady wearing white scarf. She's on at the wall. She's leaning on the wall. Where is that lady? Please bring her. I'm seeing in a vision. There's a lady wearing white scarf. White scarf. Is there someone like that? You are leaning on the fence. White scarf. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Give God a praise. Who is that? What's your name? Favor. But there's nothing favorable in your life. And the Lord is saying, change her story. Do I know you? That your name is Favor? I want to pray for you. Do you believe if I pray for you, the Lord will grant you favor? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I restore favor to you right now i restore favor to you by the power of the holy spirit come my dear this lady yes come hallelujah there is an anointing listen there is an anointing um i promise those of you outside by the grace of god hopefully by next miracle service We'll try to work on amplifying the sound so that it will, it will be very clear for you outside. Alright, I know that the people did their best, but you can see that the crowds are increasing. Praise the Lord. But there was an anointing that was upon Esther. It's called the favor anointing. In the course of the meeting, I'm going to be praying for people. But the Lord is saying I should minister this to you. Do you believe it? Huh? 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this lady and I release this grace upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, who came from Kano? I'm seeing Kano. Come. You are not alone. You are with one lady. Where are you? Huh? Two of you. Husband and wife. Come. Did you tell me you are coming? Come. She's your friend. Who is she? How are you, my dear? You came from Kano. What do you do? I'm see. I, I'm, no, you are not just a student. There's something else you are doing. I'm teaching. You are teaching. How about her? Witchcraft is what God is breaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm seeing something like a chain leaving your friend. I command that chain to leave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you and I, I command that chain to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you I declare. You will step into a new dimension of intimacy with God. That's what you need. You have been praying. You fasted. Help him. You fasted that God will give you an anointing. It's not an anointing for ministry, it's an anointing for fellowship with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of 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 Jesus Christ. Look at me. What has happened to your music ministry? That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. Huh? Do you sing? Sing something, let's hear. My God is awesome. He will move the whole world. What has happened to your music ministry? God gave you an anointing, you have been playing games with it. Come. Because God wants to restore that fire. As soon as I pass you, I saw, I saw, I heard like music and God says restore his music ministry. There are three things that can destroy a man's ministry, any ministry. One, pride. Huh? Two, women or men or anything. Just human beings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then number three is premature exposure. When people don't stay with the spirit to create a track record. But I'm going to pray for you. Huh? you your characters, you, you, must, you must behave well. Behave like where you are going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is, you, you need a lot of restoration in your life. It's not because anything is wrong. You, it's just that you need to step up. Otherwise, you will not experience the grace of God. But there is an anointing upon your music ministry. And I lay my hands upon you right now. You step into that level in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you here, please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Please. Lift your hands and believe. As I pray for you and I count three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. There are people here under yokes and spells. As soon as you shout that name Jesus, the anointing of the Spirit will move through this very overflow. This very overflow. I wanted to leave, but God is still speaking to me about this overflow. Please, I want you to believe. Help them so they don't fall inside the gutter. Father, I'm doing as you have instructed me. And I prophesy right now. That as they all shout the name of Jesus, let the power of God visit the foundations of every family represented here. Are you ready now at the count of three? One, two, three. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, help them, right now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit from your life and your destiny. There is a, a man that appears to one lady here. As I pray for you now, fire is coming upon you. You will never see that man again, not in your dreams. I command him, go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. It never comes to you again. Never, never never in the name of jesus greater strength greater prayer fire greater prayer fire greater prayer fire in the name of jesus the lady with the black heart 
Tap that lady for me. Look at me. Stretch your hands where you are. An anointing is coming upon you right now. Beauty for ashes, says the spirit. Beauty for ashes. I release that anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before I leave this place, there are seven people. The spirit of prayer is coming upon you right now. Seven people. Lord, where are they right now? Right now, across this place. Seven people. It's like fire to come upon you. Some are men, some are women. Take it. Take it. Take it right now. Take it right now. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. 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 The spirit of prayer. Like never before. Tap this lady for me. The Lord is visiting you and he's wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he's wiping your tears. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is wiping your tears. Let it end right now. Let it end now. Now. Never to return to you again. Never to return. I stretch my hands all over this room. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Every force of darkness never returns. In the name of Jesus, there is a spirit I'm dealing with. I know what I'm seeing right now, right now. I judge you by the God of heaven. Right now. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hands of certain people tied here like a chain holding your hands those of you here just lift your hands don't worry once it constants you you cannot stand it father visit them right now you will feel like literally fire on your hands a chain is breaking right now i stretch my hands let it break 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 now 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 let it break i break it by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost now I break that chain in the name of Jesus I break that chain in the name of Jesus I break that chain in the name of Jesus I restore your glory I restore your glory in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus please pray and ask the Lord to visit you pray and ask the Lord to visit you aha aha you must go in the name of Jesus, you must go. Go, go, go. Any spirit represented here, you must leave right now. I tell you, any force of darkness tying down your life. Who is this, mama? Hold on, please. Hold on. Who is this, mama? My brother. My brother. What's wrong with your marriage? This person I'm seeing was supposed to die October 21st. It's because of prayer. Because you used to carry this picture everywhere you go. I'm seeing you in a meeting. Stand up, madam. I'm seeing you in a meeting. No, 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 please. This is, help her with a handkerchief. This is a mother. You don't have to cry, please. This woman you are seeing is a very good woman. I'm seeing you in all kinds of meetings. You are not even concerned about your own problem. You are lifting up this person because I'm seeing 21st October. He was to be to die and please, Mama, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you too, you have problems, but you are not even concerned about your problem. You are not concerned about what is happening to your finances. You are not concerned about the pain in your back. You keep feeling pain in your back when you wait. As I enter here. I hear my pain go, just go away. The pain just went away when she came here. Look at this. Even before the meeting. From Kaduna, me and my... Hold on. Okay. I'm all away from Kaduna. We, my children sleep with your, with your scriptures. We work with your scriptures. Even if I will go and pass urine, the scriptures is on. The two of them are pastors. One is here. The other one is here. I finished university here in Ebi. This prayer, I mean, we do. Oh, you yeah. hold on. I have a ministry. <laughs> you have a ministry. 
my goodness can you imagine i'm looking at you what is i'm seeing your ministry has something to do with spring the spring in the name that is above all names mama listen please don't cry the lord is visiting you because this woman you see is an intercessor this woman can stay for hours praying for people who are not even it's none of our business as the holy spirit ministers to her you see but nothing is changing in your own life you pray for people and god will do miracles is that true the lord says i should tell you your whole life would you Amen. hallelujah please come follow me mama the lord is wiping Amen. are you hearing what i'm saying the lord is wiping your tears who is this huh? ah mommy this is not your son hold on this boy is not your you are calling him son but he's not your son because i'm looking at him and i'm not seeing a father where's your father he's dead sir father is dead and this is what the lord i'm looking at him and i'm not seeing father it's like the father is related to you he's my elder brother. and so you took him as your son that's why you are calling him son but this boy is not your son in the name of the lord jesus christ the lord is going to use you are you hearing what i'm saying the lord is going to use you mightily huh mommy you god is wiping your tears because this finance the thing can't just enter your hand it will enter and go out and we have to pray because the people that killed his father want to destroy you and we have to pray i'm not i don't want you to feel bad are you hearing what i'm saying it's gone and but we are not just going to allow it happen until they come and kill mama and it's because of the destiny of this person are you hearing what i'm saying the lord is going to visit you in a way that will surprise you what's wrong with him you see ba what the lord is showing me i'm not going to say everything here but what the lord is showing me today they will see that he has one sickness they will do another test huh? they will do a scan and come out with something else the devil is just playing using medicine to play with your mind this is witchcraft they have already buried this person and this issue has finished but in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm declaring and i'm speaking to everyone here i stand under the anointing and i pray for you that every power that is tying down your family it must leave you this night in the name of jesus it must leave you this night it must go 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 the same thing it must go in the mighty name of jesus christ please come madam the lord is saying i shall anoint you come you are going to do great things for god god is going to use you greatly i know you may not think you are like that but god will use you from today i open your eyes to the realm of the spirit you will step into unusual dimensions of grace i activate dimensions in your spirit elisha prayed and the eyes of the servant was open i open your eyes to visionary encounters in the name of jesus christ stretch your hands towards our mother here this woman's situation has really touched me come mama no 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 mommy please stand up stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother all the way from kaduna a woman with a ministry interceding for others this is our brother the devil wants to terminate the life of this person i like us to pray over this picture and say in the name of jesus the same power that raised christ from the dead the same power that raised christ from the dead hallelujah mommy will you believe if i tell you you are stepping into an unusual healing ministry from tonight listen you believe with all your heart have you forgotten the dream god showed you where you saw yourself in a meeting praying for people i believe i saw it so i remember did you tell me is now is the time for that dream to come to pass because you had a dream you saw yourself praying for people i'm just praying healing them and you are healing them and you have been interceding innocently the lord is telling me that now is the time for your ministry to step into another level 
two areas the issue of barrenness the issue of barrenness it will be like a special anointing to destroy barrenness are you hearing what i'm saying you will come back and testify before the people of god this thing is being recorded and the second area the second area is hiv such an anointing will come upon you as you pray for people with hiv listen paul said i desire to see you he said that i may impart some spiritual gift it doesn't matter the age impartation can happen are you hearing what i'm saying madam hold my hands i want you to shout jesus and watch what begins to happen to you go ahead jesus. father i pray from today an anointing an anointing a transference of grace an ordinary woman will become a woman of power from today an ordinary woman will carry an anointing of the spirit in a strange way in a strange way go and heal the sick 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 in the name of Jesus Christ come madam look at me come watch this mommy lay your hand on him and pray for him just do what I'm asking you to do lay your hands and speak to him look at me you carry this anointing and you will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness anointing is not for show brothers and sisters but i tell you it will scare you this anointing will bring wealth to you people will sow into your life because of the impact in her life come on go when you go back lay this picture on your brother and pray for him god will take him out of that hospital and when he does bring him here and he will come and testify to the glory of God. The Lord told me he's wiping your tears. Come, sir. What do you do? What do you do? What did you study? I'm going to pray for you. You want to further? Yes, sir. That's what yes, sir. Political science. Sir. Because God is going to use you in the area of leadership. It was in, in prayer God put in your spirit to study political science. Amen. Although what you studied, um, I'm not seeing a university like a college or something. College of education. Federal College of Education. You study something that has to do with education. Business education. Business education. But then it's leadership. And God is taking you to that position. When you study it, he will make you a great leader. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Wait, Mr. Man. Just wait. Let me finish. I'm praying for you. Make sure when God blesses you, you never forget this woman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never forget this woman. She has done what for you many people will not do. She has taken you as a son. She has spent her money to the last to help you. Is that true? If you forget this woman, God will not be happy with you. Let me use this as an encouragement. You see, when somebody suffers to help you and you rise, you will be a wicked person to forget that person. Some of us are like this. Some of our parents have labored to help us. Don't say, I must be a millionaire before I bless them. The day God gives you 20,000, you can take 1,000 and say, Mama, take. Some of us are very greedy. God is blessing you, but you are still latching onto the little resources of the parents. It must change. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, take him to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I impart upon you wisdom and leadership. Occupy that mountain. Fire is coming upon your hands. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Father, visit our mother. For what you have done, Mama, my God will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. My God will visit you. In the name of Jesus. Please bring this woman for me. This one wearing this very one yes this she's she's not feeling fine something is wrong with her please let her come is god blessing you tonight 
Who brought her? Please, who brought her? If you brought her, please come with her so that we'll know what to do. There's no mind. What's wrong with her, Mama? Diabetes. Diabetes. How old is she? Do you know? Oh, you just met her. Or you know her. Okay, it's your junior sister. From where? Can she hear me? Or do you need somebody to talk to her in the language? You need translation. If I talk to you, can you talk to her in the language? Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to heal her of diabetes. What tribe are you, madam? Eh? He got her pastor Alpha now. Carry mic. What are you here? Oh, yeah, yeah, carry mic. Because I'm trying to, let's make this easy. Give him mic, please. Every tribe here, there must be somebody. If there's nobody who lay hands on somebody for the purpose, there's no other mic. Okay, don't worry. Come, Pastor. Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to visit her. Jesus, I chug guy by a dog. Ask her question. And she can't know. Tell her, God, heal her of diabetes. Or draw her dog at diabetes. And the dream of death that she has been having. Or now, who can nale? And God is going to heal her. Or draw her to you, nale? How long has she been suffering? A quick bow guy to the boy. Does she know what's going on? Eche men ki ache. Diabetes. What couldn't she do? Then when man ki eche kudu. Eni ki eche kolon. Mama, ask. Tell her I'm going to pray for her, and the power of God will come. Yana chadwe bayo jo awoji e papa. Um, me and her will run here now. Uncle and I rule me. I'm going to pray for her and we will not walk, we will run together. Tell her not to worry. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. If we do Jesus, if we do Jesus, I rebuke who dot down diabetes. Diabetes. In the name of Jesus. If we do Jesus. Look at what is happening to her. It's a spirit. Look at. Are you seeing this? Look at the spirit. You call it sickness. Look at what is happening. This is an old woman. Ah, huh? diabetes is a spirit. I command it to live now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Mama. Tell her. Tell her. Then you can that. She's going to do what she has never done. And she should not be afraid. Stop. Walk. Come. 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 Look at this, look at this. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Hold on. Sam, give us one powerful Igala song. Where is Sam? You sang one song during Annie's wedding. Eh? Sing that song. Tell Mama she's going to dance now. Eh? And the Igala people will join her and dance to the shame of the devil. Hosanna, oh my David, oh Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh my David, oh Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh, oh my David, oh Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh, oh my David, oh Chonuka Wama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh, oh my David, oh Chonuka Wama, oh Hosanna.
just a shout, a shout, a shout. This miracle remains permanent forever. How many How many of you saw the way that woman was standing here? You saw the way she was standing. Look how God can change a man's story. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. There is a woman here that they brought. I don't know where she is. But I'm seeing it's, it's something that is a medical condition. I don't know if it's a fibroid or a growth. Please, who is that person? We really have to be fast. A growth, like a, I don't know if it's a growth that the person came with. They, they said the person has something like a growth. I don't know if it's a fibroid now. Whether it's... Eh? No, no, no. The person I'm talking about is here. Oh. It may be inside or outside. I'm seeing somebody. Um, it's like there's a medical condition that has to do with a swelling or growth or something. Who is that? Who is that person? Come. No, your own, you are not sick. It's, it's demons. Just stand. We'll deal with that one now. Now, your eh? No, no, no. Leave him. This your stomach is swollen. They want to kill you. Somebody, somebody hit you with something in a dream some months back. You didn't even remember. Now your stomach is swelling. We'll deal with that one. I don't know you. I'm just just stand there. That one is is an easy something. This come the come. You have a problem. Come up. The devil. I, the devil wants to destroy this lady because if I don't pray for you they will, I'm seeing your case getting so serious they will now take you to India for a kidney pr transplant what's wrong with you? kidney nephritis what does that mean? inflammation how do you know it's the doctor told me I cannot lie on both sides of my you can't lie down here. Yes, and even yet, I sleep straight. You see the wickedness of the devil. That even to sleep, you can't sleep this way. You can't sleep. How else do you sleep? Lie down flat. That devil must leave you. What's your name? Precious. You know how? Who knows her? Before you now start talking another rubbish story. Daddy. Please come, sir. Our, our daddy. Yes, sir. Our daddy is praying a prayer. And the prayer has to do with, no. The Hold your photo like this, sir. Open it to the third one. That's what I want to talk to you about. One, okay. I'm seeing, okay, I thought it was the third one. Back, I'm seeing another photo. This thing is like it's supposed to be three. It's not two. Where is the third one? It's at home. That's the one I want to talk about. That's why I said take it to the third one. You brought two here. But the person I want to talk about, there is a third one. Who is in that photo? Henry. Henry. Because we want to pray. Demons stop him from coming. Did you ask him to come? I asked him to come. He chose not to. That's what I'm saying. If that boy had come, let me tell you. Do you know? That if 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 you can come for koinonia alone, you don't want to know the powers you overcame to arrive. Tell somebody koinonia and see the way demons fight. They are coming here. Flimsy excuses. They will tell you, uh, I just think I don't have this. It's because the devil knows. He knows. That's what happened to this person. And you see, today would have been his day of visitation. I looked at this and I saw three, because I'm not, you may see me looking at you physically, but I'm operating from the spirit. I saw three pictures and I said, go to the third one. You left the third one at home, just like the person to come. If he agreed, the Holy Ghost would have reminded you and forced you to carry the third one. You see, please, brothers and sisters, when you invite people and they refuse, don't insult them. You're a spiritual man. You should know that is to you a sign that God wants them to be here. Are we together now? Daddy, I'm going to talk to you now and I'll pray with you. There's something about him, but I will not tell you in public. Huh? So that you will not hear that this person left the faith into something else. You hear what I'm saying? I don't want, it's not something where this is a public talk, but 
we don't want to hear that kind of story because it's already happening there is a spirit that converts men it doesn't happen by default we must attack it in the name of jesus christ where is this our lady come we are going to pray for this kidney both of your kidneys is verified that you have a, a kidney problem so we're going to pray lay your hands on it please can we pray for this dear one anything that happens to one of us happens to all of us don't say it's not yet my issue uh -uh. pray for her your prayer is working there's a surgery the Lord is doing in her place your hand on her I command that devil right now out out of her that spirit masquerading as kidney kidney problem in the name of Jesus Christ I command a miracle for you right now I stretch my hands I make contact by the anointing of the Holy Ghost my goodness there's such power flowing I declare a miracle I declare a miracle I declare a miracle stand up stand up what couldn't you do before press it press it right now surprised even her her and her own body she's even surprised that something is happening her and her own body i pray that god will anoint you to be able to bring healing and deliverance to people in the name of the lord jesus christ you don't know how cheap the devil is until you are really anointed if you are not anointed you will make a ceremony out of nothing but when that anointing is not about trying to get it done if it's there is there if it's not there is not there my dear check it honestly if there's pain tell us we will not be afraid this god is touching another lady heal her oh god in the name of jesus fire is coming on a lady's throat I don't know what has to do. I'm about to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing throat right now. There is a lady like that. Fire is coming. Something will touch your throat. It's like a sickness. My dear, I'd like you to shout, I am healed. Shout it. I am healed. Shout it again. I am healed. Shout it one more time. Go and check yourself and you come back to testify. In the name of Jesus, King Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The anointing is on that lady covering her, her mouth and nose. This lady, I don't know who she is. I'm not, yes, that very lady you are holding. There's a strong anointing on her. Strong anointing on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strong anointing on her. We're going to be very fast because it's cold and we have to there's one of the ushers the power of god is coming on you now i know you are doing ushering work wherever you are i'm seeing an usher please bring that person right now an usher lady right now you are busy doing your work quietly but the anointing of god will land on you right now where's the usher please bring her you're an usher you are doing your work that's all right but God needs to visit you now. That you are walking, whether ushering or protocol, you mind your business. There's somebody in welfare, welfare. The power of God is coming on somebody in welfare right now. Welfare department, welfare department. 
I'm seeing an anointing coming on somebody in welfare department. God just does strange things. They are called signs and wonders. We really don't know why it's done. Before we continue, there's one person from protocol. That's what I see in the spirit. Protocol department. The protocol department. There's somebody that the Lord is touching right now. In protocol department, wherever you are, I really don't care where, whether inside or outside. But God is touching somebody right now. Right now in protocol department. It's like fire. It will just come on you all of a sudden. It's a sign and a wonder. It's a miracle. Please let me have those people out. There's a reason why I'm calling them out. That person from Koshri. Who is that? Protocol department. Where's the person from? Where? Welcome. Hallelujah. Bring three of them. It's a prophetic language. I want to tell you what God is saying through this. The first impartation is God prophesying to men that you are entering into new seasons. So just like an usher brings you, it's a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release it upon you. I release it upon you right now just like an usher takes you into a new level I stand under this anointing and I prophesy enter a new season enter a new dimension in the name of Jesus the impartation upon the welfare person is the mystery of supplies the Lord is saying he's ending stagnancy in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is ending stagnancy in the name of Jesus Christ the person from the protocol the Lord is saying I will be your defender even in this season I release that word upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ please everyone that came with a sick person um, it's already happening to Pastor Femi but Pastor Femi and three members of Rema will come under the anointing right now three members who are members of Rema Chapel that's what I'm seeing as it's happening to him it's happening to three people three people who attend Rema Chapel three people in the name of the Lord Jesus it's a new season for you new season for you new season for you by the power of the Holy Spirit you don't have to bring them out just leave them where they are hallelujah we have five minutes to do this five minutes because there is the session where i prophesy please make sure we are going to try to finish fast but make sure you receive everything don't come and waste your time and stay now all those who came with sick people apart from those who have been healed if you brought somebody sick please bring them out quickly quickly let's lay hands on them give us some please quickly the Lord is healing people. There's the healing anointing in this place right now. God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. Please, quickly. No matter which of the overflows, brothers and sisters, there is multiplied grace in this house. Don't come and go back sick. You just need a touch. It's, it's just a touch. There's no need for any long story. So you don't necessarily have to be saying this. What is wrong with me if I don't ask you? Just a touch. Even if you are coming here for the first time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those of us who are out here. Jesus loves you. That's why he wants to heal you. Please. I want you to receive. You can reject it. But I want you to receive it with all your heart. As I pray for you, you go back, check yourself. Because of time, we may not have time to share testimony. But hold on, please. Let me say something about testimonies. Um, it is, you are robbing God of glory when God gives you healing and blessings. There are so many people who God has been touching, but they never return. To give thanks one of the ways you maintain your miracle is by giving thanks please come your breakthrough has come 
Yes, please, madam, come. The Lord is bringing a visitation to you right now. Don't put her up. Just keep her somewhere because the anointing is still on her. And so that she doesn't keep collapsing up and down. Look how many people are trusting God for healing. Ma, please look at me. God is restoring you financially, spiritually. Financially, there is an anointing on you as I speak to you. Financially, spiritually. I'm seeing God step even into your marriage. Our mother is crying. Your marriage. This is the reason why you came. Because there's nothing there. God is stepping in to do a miracle for you. To the glory of his name. Miracle for you. Who is this? Your mom. What's wrong with her? She has, she has been sick three years. And don't know if you know what. Why didn't you bring her here? Yola. Yola. Hold the picture. Just hold it. I will use you as a point of contact. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through the picture to you and will touch her right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your healing power touch mama. She's in your lab, but touch her, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. God is also bringing speed into your life. Speed, right now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speed! I prophesy it upon you. Never to be the same again. And we pray for healing for mama. He will testify in the name of Jesus. The anointing is so strong on you. God is bringing restoration in your marriage. God is bringing restoration in your finances. God is bringing restoration in your spiritual life. I command everything the devil has stolen to give way. In the name of Jesus. There are so many people here and we are going to be very fast. Just a touch. Please, I want you to believe. If you are standing in for somebody, you can agree with them. As you go back, you can touch them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe we'll be very fast in the name of Jesus. All over the congregation, I want you to begin to pray in tongues because immediately after this, we'll be prophesying. While you are praying in tongues, pass your prayer request. Both the one for souls and then your prayer request. Please pass it. So ushers, you can split yourself inside and outside. Someone attend to those in the overflows. Please, very good. Thank you, Jesus. Let your power touch your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A glorious God. A miracle right Hold on, let me attend to this gentleman. I promise that we'll look at him. Everybody look if you can look at it from your screens or wherever. You see that when you look at this guy, this is unusual. This is abnormal, right? How long has it been, my brother? Since last year. What happened to you? Uh, the, uh... I am, I'm just sick. I don't know what is happening to me. So I went to the hospital. They said I should go and do scanning. They said my spleen don't, don't big. What? My spleen don't big. So later on. What is that? Come now, doctor. You're already there. The spleen is an organ that reserves blood just below the ribs on the left side. I'm wondering that it's a cancer is disturbing me. Cancer? Cancer of what? So for now, I'm still there for this hospital for this uh, shika. So they never told me for cancer for what was still. Who told you about this place? It's my friend. May God bless that friend forever. In the name of Jesus. My brother, look at me. Do you believe Jesus can touch you? I, I believe Jesus. Love Jesus. I love Jesus. Born again. I'm a born again sir. You are serious with him? Yes, sir. Very, very serious. Very serious. I want you to know. Do you think he will just watch you just die like that? Do you believe it's his will for your stomach to be swelling? If you have a child and you have the power to help that child and you see the child's stomach swelling like that, will you smile and tell him continue and die? Is that love? So I want you to know that this thing, God has no hand in it. This is the devil. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. Lay your hands on your stomach. Don't let the name cancer scare you. You understand? It is because of what you have heard. The conditioning in your spirit that has made you feel that is cancer. 
uh, and made you feel it is destructive. There is the life of God. It's called the way. The very life of God. And I want to pray to you. You believe that? You want to kill that cancer and it must leave your body so that you will not die. I believe that like every other person, you have your plans and aspirations. And this is already threatening you to cut short your life. Huh? Are you married? Where's your wife? Because I'm seeing your wife crying. Your wife is already thinking now and saying that this is how my husband will die. And I'll have to start looking for another man to marry me. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Father, do a miracle for this brother. We know that cancer is a spirit. In the name of Jesus, cancer, die. Die. In the name of Jesus. The condition for your disappearance in this body we bring them to place and I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus that this cancer will die and it will leave your body forever in the name of Jesus Christ you will return and you will testify make sure you testify when God gives you a breakthrough what's your name Sarah. Sarah. so make sure you testify in the name of Jesus Christ those outside can we rise this is a very prophetic moment hallelujah this is a very very serious moment the requests here contain the names of loved ones I want you to know that everyone is an evangelist this year there is there is need for massive salvation the Lord spoke to me and said he's trusting that he will find the people who will bring souls this year like never before and i told him i said lord i'm available so make sure that from now till december you don't come alone we, we are on a mission not just to ease ourselves of the guilt of not being soul winners it's serious business hallelujah please those who are yet to submit the names of their loved ones that you are trusting God for them to be saved and then our requests very quickly we have a few minutes now we're going to do it in this order the moment let me make an altar call before we pray for this so we can conserve our time there are people here 
hear me first overflow second overflow across the road listen there are people here probably you were invited and you know that you need to make your ways right with jesus the bible says for god so loved the world he so loved you and he demonstrated that love by giving his all his one and only begotten son please by the way i don't want you to miss the series we are starting next week we are taking a series on the gospel we are going to be examining who jesus is and the message that he brought what is the content in the gospel that really saves men so this is profound we preachers have been distracted teaching people on restoration and demons we need to get back and let people understand who jesus is what message did he bring and why is it very powerful where are we really going with all this christianity thing so it's a powerful series you don't want to miss it will be having that all through february praise the lord it will rattle the foundation of your understanding about god and will be walking in exchange hallelujah for instance let me give you a little preview um the message of jesus when he came his message was just one word repent that's all jesus said repent so we're going to be checking what does it mean to repent does it mean to come and emotionally answer a, a, a poem to repeat after the man of god what, what is the what is the jurisdiction of that word repent hallelujah so this is very very important i'm going to make an altar call now and while the people march forward please clear the way for them we'll stretch our hands and be interceding first for souls leave the issue of your needs we're going to intercede you wrote their names you know call them by their names and say lord we receive their salvation if you save me you can save them you don't want to watch your family members in hell and they are calling on you and saying you know me we came out from the same womb but some of them we know that they are going to hell there's no confusion about it god is a god of love we'll be learning next week but then the truth is there is hell don't let anybody deceive you there is a place called hell there are people there right now praise the lord you are here you need to make your ways right with god you've been hearing preachers talk again and again outside inside you probably are making this decision for the first time seriously in your life or you've been answering many altar calls you don't even know how many and you don't know the name of what you have been doing and tonight you are saying i really want to come out and make a decision or you have even given your life to christ you are a pastor you are you know functioning in the body of christ but you know that you need a a rededication of your life Things happen around your life, discouragements, God didn't answer your prayer and he made you to derail out of the way of the Lord. Those two categories of people, I'm going to count one to five, please for time's sake, for time's sake, wherever you are, leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain, especially for those outside. One, quickly, God bless you. God bless you. Don't, don't fight it. Win that war tonight. There are so many people coming from outside no matter how far don't say it's too far make your way to jesus god bless you one two keep coming please don't stop don't let your friend don't let anyone stop you this is a destiny decision you have seen the power of god you have seen the grace of god you know that he loves you that he allowed you come for koinonia tonight it's a sign that he loves you and he has great plans for you make your way to the front very quickly while they come keep coming please stretch your hands towards this request and begin to pray in tongues please everybody pray in tongues first for the salvation forget about your prayer request please keep coming you know you need to be out here no matter how long it will take please make your way to the front no matter what you have done jesus loves you and he can give you a new beginning so make your way to the front stretch your hands and let's pray on this request all of you that are inside just stretch your hands as a point of contact those outside stretch your hands towards the screen and let's pray shegata pratagada baladabash mam protoko topo shoto pratagada baladabash ragada barato kosoto pratagada baladabash shekapa bakata baladabash shekapa roko topo mante krotos kobara balash lord we pray for every soul Every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul in this place. 
Lord save them some of them are not even Christians save them to the uttermost young and old we receive their salvation give them dreams give them encounters you died for them they must not go to hell you have great plans for them they need to experience the love of Jesus we intercede for their souls we intercede for their souls we intercede for their souls in the name of the Lord Jesus Lord save our fathers save our mothers save our brothers our classmates our colleagues in the office in the name of Jesus our families no matter how far they are from the cross bring them to meetings give them encounters Holy Spirit we permit your ministry in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah now begin to pray over your request lay your hands over your request by faith and say Lord I turn it into a testimony go ahead and pray I turn it into a testimony I turn it into a testimony I turn it into a testimony Father, give your people testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, we bring this before your altar. Give your people manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Manifold testimonies. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we pray for every soul represented here. We release angels of salvation wherever they are in the name that is above all names. We authorize these angels to hunt for their souls. They will know no peace till they find the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release dreams we release visions of Jesus. We release encounters with the world. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere they turn to, they will hear the gospel. They will hear it in church. They will hear it in class. They will hear it everywhere. For those who have vowed that they will not give their life to Christ. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we we place their stubbornness side by side with the blood of Jesus and we declare that their souls must be saved and not only saved they will be saved added to the church and established in righteousness in the name of Jesus Lord we pray for these requests Lord right here are humanly speaking impossible situations but lord as i walk upon them they become testimonies as i walk upon them they become testimonies and lord your people will stand to testify in the presence of everyone healings and miracles and breakthroughs and salvations and restorations in the name of the lord jesus christ now those of you who are making this decision for Jesus Christ I love you from the depth of my heart and I thank you for coming out to accept Jesus Christ it's a very noble decision hallelujah there's no need to feel as if you are going to hellfire it's an exciting thing because it looks natural but it is supernatural in every way lift your right hand and say this after me I'm just guiding you but it's, it's, it's the truth from your heart that really sets you free Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. 
with all my heart some of you as you are praying you will literally feel things leaving you as you are praying jesus said i am the way the truth and i am the life say after me again lord jesus i believe in you and i love you with all my heart i accept that i cannot help myself and i ask you tonight save me cleanse me in the name of jesus everything in me that is not from you i command to leave me right now i declare that i have eternal life in my spirit i'm a child of god my goodness i sense such heavy anointing of the holy spirit even just right here in the altar right here i'm sensing that there is such a strong anointing ministering to people ministering to people something is entering you in the name of the lord jesus christ those who are getting born again as you are getting born again some of you are getting filled with the holy ghost instantly instantly because i see the power of god coming on some of you in the name of jesus say after me from today i'm a child of god the life of god is in me i will never be the same in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit may you become mighty men and women of the spirit in the name of jesus may god do great and mighty things in and through your life i really pray for you from the depth of my heart may you never go back to the systems of this world again may the holy spirit guide you may he instruct you and teach you in the name of jesus christ may you be established in righteousness in jesus name i pray may god bless you i'd like you to follow the lady waving her hands she will have your details and i promise that we'll send you a text and we'll follow you up may god bless you in jesus name follow the lady very quickly hallelujah god bless you please everyone stand everyone stand i want to speak over your life now and please i want you to pay attention those outside this is when everybody gets to receive something mighty upon their lives i believe in the power of prophecy i believe in its ability to change the course of your life please let's prepare the announcement quickly so that we can take it afterwards we have seen in this house what god has done with prophecy when pastor alpha came up here he was admonishing us and he told us he said you don't just believe in the lord but you believe in the prophets that he has put. this is not human worship it's an election of grace god sends men and anoints them with apostolic and, and prophetic mantles and graces because he wants to use the words through them to step into your life and destiny there will be radical change as i, pre I prophesy over your life lift your hands inside and outside lift your hands the power of God is strong I already feel like fire on my hands I speak over your life a dimension of speed you have never seen a dimension of speed you have never seen receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive it right now in the name of Jesus inside and outside let a mantle come on you for supernatural speed in the name of jesus i pray for you every spiritual blindness everything covering your eyes from accessing insight in the word of god you need insight your life is at the mercy of the spiritual insight you have i'm praying for you like a veil torn from a man's eyes i command that veil to be torn right now i command that veil to be torn right now i command that veil to be torn right now i speak against the spirit of limitation that force from hell it allows you to move forward but it will say you will not cross this border in the name that is above all names i come under this anointing this night and i command whatever limit you have seen in your life i break it tonight i break
break that limit tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every strange dream every spiritual encounter of the night that is not orchestrated from heaven every visitation of demons they appear as animals they appear as men as women they appear as all kinds of things seeing yourself in primary school wearing all kinds of things i don't care what it is in the name that is above all names i command judgment upon those spirits now i command judgment upon those spirits now every voice that calls you forth in your sleep and programs tragedy over your destiny the bible was not it didn't leave us in darkness as to what happens when men sleep i pray whatever calls you forth in your sleep and reprograms your destiny so that you wake up into tragedies by the blood of jesus i attack those enchanters I challenge their enchantment in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you prosperity like you have never seen a dimension of wealth like you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus I pray upon you the same way favor can come on a man like a man to you can carry it you can know you are carrying help that guy please see this will come on people seriously this ministry has enjoyed a level of inexplainable favor i'm praying for you from that which has come upon this ministry let it come upon your life right now i release that favor in the name of jesus receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive that favor receive that favor hallelujah i pray for you and jabez was more honorable listen honor is not just age honor is a mantle god can is a distinguishing anointing that sets you apart and men not only recognize your difference but they celebrate it i'm praying for you in the name of jesus christ from today an unction comes upon you a strange grace that makes men to celebrate who you are and what you carry believe me when i say this i pray for you inside and outside from the depth of my spirit that mantle of honor that distinguishing anointing receive it in the name of jesus I pray for your families every project that has refused to be completed I don't care what it is the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it I'm praying for you whatever has experienced stagnancy in your family I supply spirit power and I command it to start moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ every uncompleted project hear the word of the lord tonight i command you to be completed in the name of jesus i've said it again and again that the next level of your life is a destiny help i way listen listen i have seen in my life and i have enjoyed the strange ministry of destiny helpers brothers and sisters god does not need 20 people to change your life one correct person can just step into your life there was a man who some friends insisted he must be healed they carried him and tossed somebody's zinc and brought him to those are not friends they are destiny helpers my god in the name of jesus i don't know where they are who must appear in your life between now and february but in the name that is above all names i speak to the north I speak to the south I speak to the east I speak to the west 
destiny help us come forth now come forth now financial help us come forth now marital help us come forth now academic help us come forth now career help us come forth now if there are no human beings to occupy that position angels must appear in human bodies and perform that role i pray for you the lord told us this year is a year of multiplied grace and influence i want you to go back and meditate on it you already see what is happening in the house the house has entered another dimension and everybody who cares has entered that dimension i pray for you i don't know what level of grace you have been functioning in but i pray listen to what i'm about to tell you in the name of jesus whatever dimension of grace you have seen right now i stand under this apostolic anointing i multiply that grace upon your life i multiply that grace i multiply that healing power i multiply that deliverance power i multiply that grace for favor i multiply that teaching anointing i multiply your influence where you could not have gone by now i pray by the wings of the spirit may you be carried to strange dimensions of influence where your business has not gotten to where your certificate could not have entered in the name of jesus i expand your spiritual borders and i compel influence in your life in the name of jesus christ when you open your mouth to call for help i force your words to enter the ears of an helper in the name of jesus christ i say it again koinonia that if you dare open your mouth to cry for help i declare may that word not die till it enters the ears of your helper i speak to the elements of creation i compel them to come in alignment with your destiny in the name of jesus christ i use the earth as a point of contact every human being works on the earth i speak that anywhere the earth sees you let it compel favor for you some of you may not understand what i'm doing just believe me job said for out of the earth comes bread i command the bread that is buried for your destiny in the earth i call it out in the name of jesus christ i don't know the desires of your heart but i'm praying that between now and the next miracle service that you will come and stand before the people of God and testify to the might of God. Everything that has brought tears out of your family, I judge it right now. Every career person, listen to me, we are forcing promotion this year. Don't say it cannot happen, you will fool yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? look in the name that is above all names the mystery of lifting may it come upon your life every student here your cgpa has yes and i want to speak to it in the name you had the testimony of that gentleman he didn't even complete the testimony he sent me the text he was praying for 0.11 and that's exactly what he got 0 0.11 and it brought him to 3.50 i pray for you in the name of jesus especially for those who are just starting 100 level you will start with a mysterious gpa that will shock people i pray for those who have tried and tried but your academics is just hooking you you have done all you know to do i bail you out of it this night in the name of jesus christ i bail you out of it this night in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you 
I must pray for your spiritual life. Encounters that you have never had. Listen. You need encounters in your life. You need encounters. You hear people like Bishop Oyedeko mention encounters and what he transmitted in them. I pray. Strange encounters with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God that will launch your destiny to another dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing dies in your hands. I say it again. Nothing dies in your hands. Those who came from far, I prophesy to you. You left all and paid the price to come. Carry an unction that will shock all that know you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will go back to your campuses. You will go back to your job. You will go back to your homes with a mysterious anointing that will distinguish you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that the miracles begin in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Just give me a minute or two and then we're done very quickly. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.